Good morning. Welcome to Bethel. Wherever you are, we'll welcome you. A few announcements for you. Uh, you are invited for um, today at 3 p.m. Um, um, we are celebrating my installation. So you already received the YouTube uh, link, so you can click on it so you can see the whole thing. We also um, ask you to join us for the Esther Circle that will be that will be meeting on Zoom this Tuesday, November 10 at 7 p.m. Please contact Sheila Lynch or the church office for the link um, to participate or to join us um, in the Bible study. So now let's um, take a deep breath together to, uh, to allow the spirit that connects us with one another to be. The spirit within us that allows us to see one another as human beings, regardless our flaws, imperfection, and the messy people we are. The spirit that gives life. The life, when it's taken away from one, affects all of us. We are here to receive Christ. We are called to proclaim Christ. We are sent to show Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us in all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to, to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God, God's work in the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son, Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first lesson today is from Joshua chapter 24, verses 1 to 3a and 14 to 25. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. 
For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of a house of slavery and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed and the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. He said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve and in him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. Thus ends the first readings. Our psalm for today is Psalm 78. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times that which we have heard and known and what our forebears have told us. We will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works God has done. The Lord gave a decree in Jacob and established a law in Israel, commanding our ancestors to teach it to their children, that the generations to come might know, and the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children so that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God, but keep God's commandment. The second lesson is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Thus ends the second reading. At this time, we will continue with our prayer requests for today. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, We pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Please pray for Renee, Bob, Neil and Linda, Al, Michaela, Bruce, Sophia, Ken, Virginia, Don, Art, Jackie, Cecilia, Richard and Vicky, Ethel, Liam, Doris, Larry, Abby, Myrtle, Maria, Paul, Karen, Don, Tyler, Doris, Eloise, Tom, Carol, Merle, Bob, Ed, Crystal, Dolly, Ian, Kristen, 
Pat Connoran family, Pamela, Susan, Neil, Deirdre, John and Colleen, Alyssa, Albert, Lisa and finally Sandy. We pray for hope, comfort, help and healing as we deal with COVID-19 in our nation and in our world. At this time, we remember especially those who are most vulnerable to the disease, as well as those who are struggling with the many challenges of everyday life in a pandemic. We ask for your care and safety, Lord, for all whose lives are affected by wildfires and for the firefighters who are working to contain them. Give your church unity. Inspire all the baptised with the mind of Christ, where the church is powerful and where it struggles. Shape us with humility and obedience so that your love might be at work in us. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds both physical and mental, experienced by service members. We pray for the work of ELCA World Hunger in bringing food and long-term solutions to the hungry throughout the world. We pray for our church, Lord, for Pastor Mitch, our church council, our church staff members, our COVID-19 reopening committee, the Sierra Pacific Synod, Bishop Mark Holmerud, and the people of Bethel as we worship and serve together. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flocks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed to their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will be enough there will not be enough for you and for us you had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves and while they went to buy it the bridegroom came and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet and the door was shut later the other bridesmaids came also saying lord lord open to us but he replied truly i tell you i do not know you Keep away therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. The readings today are a series of reminders of what God has done for us in the past and what God is doing in Christ at this moment here and now. I invite you to dive into each one with me. 
Let's start with Psalm 78. Psalm 78 is one of the poetic narrations of ancient Israel's history, starting with the exodus from Egypt to the wilderness wanderings, to the time of the settlement in the land of Canaan, and on through the King David. This is the story of God's faithfulness to the people, despite the people's unfaithfulness to God. The psalmist urges us to not only remember God's works as a collective community, but to learn the lesson of our past and pass it on to our future generations. This is the promise we make this morning by saying this poem together. The second reading is from Thessalonians. The first letter to the Thessalonians is the oldest of Paul's writings that comes to us. At the beginning of the letter, he praises the believers for they turn to God from idols to serve a living and true God. Thessalonica was a city filled with worship of the empower, empower, em, em, emperor and other gods. Furthermore, Paul specifies that this God they serve is God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He encourages them to live a life pleasing to God. Paul writes to the believers of Thessalonica that he does not want them to be uninformed. Their hope and ours is in Jesus' death and resurrection. On the fi final day, those who have died in Christ will rise first. Until that time, some people may proclaim peace and security, but the day of the Lord will come unexpectedly. Our third, third reading is from the book of Joshua. In the book of Joshua, Joshua gathers all the tribes of Israel before God and calls them to leave their idols and pledge total allegiance to the Lord. In God's presence, Joshua reminds them of what God has done to bring them to this place and time, and his talk elicits a hasty res response from people who have not yet counted the cost of total faith faithfulness. Joshua emphasizes that Abraham's father and brother Nair serve other gods beyond the Euphrates, offering information about the patriarch's relatives' idolatrous practices in Ur and Haran. By exposing their ancestors' idolatry and unworthiness and proclaiming God's deliverance of Abraham and his offspring from false beliefs, Joshua admonishes the people to avoid their ancestors' feelings. In chapter 24, Joshua emphasizes three key actions that the Lord Yahweh has done to set Israel God apart from other gods. First, he says, the Lord took Abraham from beyond the river, stressing God's action in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4, in choosing and blessing Abraham to, so that he would be a blessing to others. Second, when the Israelites were being pursued after escaping from Egypt, the Lord put darkness between them and the Egyptians and made the sea come upon the Egyptians. Third, the Lord has given them a land to live in. Finally, Joshua asked the key question. Who are you going to serve? What are some of the belief systems, attachments, and allegiances we have inherited that compromise our full allegiance to God and the divine realm? Have we inherited a tendency to place our confidence in, in human accomplishments more than in God's action on our behalf? How does idolatry manifests itself today. Today's gospel is another parable which Jesus uses to teach his disciples. By now, you know in Matthew's gospel, it is Jesus' style. 
as Jesus neared the end of his ministry, he wanted his disciples to be prepared for the time when he would no longer be with them. But he was also preparing them for something more. He was preparing his followers for the fulfillment of God's promised kingdom for the end of the age. He doesn't take a lot of in-depth study to notice everything that seems to be wrong with the story of the ten virgins who went out to meet the bridegroom. For example, there is no bride at this wedding party. And what decent bridegroom comes to his own wedding hours after it was scheduled to begin? There is also the problem of the wise bridesmaids refusing to share their oil with the others. That doesn't seem very gracious, isn't it? And what oil merchant is going to be open for business at midnight? Finally, there's the problem of the bridegroom refusing to open the door to the bridesmaids who, ha who had to go find oil in the middle of the night just because they came to the party late. This is the same guy who kept them waiting for hours, remember? The parable is full of problems and puzzles and trying to explain every one of them could send us down lots of different rabbit holes. So let's stick to the basics. This parable compares two types of believers, the wise and the foolish, or the prepared and the unprepared. Jesus uses the image of bridesmaids waiting for a bridegroom to set before us two options, wisdom or foolishness. As the bridesmaids wait in darkness, it's hard to tell the wise from the foolish. In the dark, they all look alike, but each of us must decide which type of bridesmaid we want to imitate because the world is watching us. How do we keep our lamps burning as a reminder of what God has done for us in the past and what God is doing in Christ at this moment here and now so we can be fully present to God and to those God has put in our path. Here is the good news. It is in our baptism. Baptism brings us into the neighborhood of other Christians. And there is no way of being a Christian without being in the neighborhood of other Christians. It is a gift because in this community of baptized people, we receive life from others' prayer and love, and we give the prayer and love to others' need. The solidarity that baptism brings us into the solidarity with suffering and with joy is a solidarity with one another as well. What affects one, Christians, affects all. What affects all, affects each one. So my sibling in Christ, baptism restores a God-given identity that has been forgotten or overlaid. Baptism takes us to where Jesus is. It takes us, therefore, into close communion with a dark and fallen world, and it takes us into close communion with others invited there. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all, for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. There is a, pla there is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table. My sibling in Christ, the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard, to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, be safe, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>